getting tired of the snow theme. Mustang, I'm getting tired of winter. <laughs> spring I don't see how it can make you feel cold Mr. Twitch Box because like if you're sat in a truck it's all nice and warm who likes winter anyway some people do best some people love it like ridiculously cold Like, some people, you know, when it's in summer and it's too hot, they'll be like, oh, come on, winter. I hate being too hot. Fifty-eight days till spring. It's around about mid-February when you start to see the daylight changing, you know? mid to late Feb by the time March comes the days are getting longer quickly and then the clock moves and then all of a sudden boom it's like 15 hours of daylight it won't be that long I mean January's nearly gone that's gone pretty fast got a system build to finish. Alright, Master Mike. Hope it goes well. Can we do the next job in the summer sunshine? Lol. You don't mind dark evenings and the dark mornings that kill you. I don't know. It's not... For me, it's just the short the short daylight hours like if you want to get something done outside not only is it cold but you don't have that many hours to do it like when I was doing the studio you know I was racing against the clock in the afternoon you're gonna be starting your new kitchen first week of February what are you building it shoe bandit getting up in the dark mornings it is more difficult some people get those um day have you seen those daylight clocks they're basically like an alarm clock but for like 30 minutes before the alarm's about to go off they they have a huge like daylight bulb on them and they bring the light level up in your room very slowly and then by the time the alarm goes off the room is already like pretty much daylight which basically simulates sunrise. Oh my god, I only just stopped. You have that alarm, they're great. Yeah, people with SAD use them quite a lot. But apparently they make you more alert when you wake up because they, they improve your circadian rhythms by basically, although you're asleep, your brain knows that the light levels are going up outside. And when you wake up, it's it's much more daylight. SAD, Seasonal Affective Depression. It's people who get depression um, most, like, basically during the winter because of the lack of daylight. The daylight triggers your brain. And in some people, um, the lack of daylight in winter causes a biochemical response where they don't produce enough uh, serotonin I think it is something like that and that leads to anxiety and depression and they're, they're basically the people with SAD so the counter to that is to uh, if they get if they get one of these special daylight bulbs and they're not cheap but if they get one and, and sit in front of it for like two hours a day it'll produce enough it'll stimulate the brain enough to counter the problem
Let's grab my cup of tea and move it over here. Like that. You have that problem, SK. Have you got one of those lamps? I mean, a lot of people get down in winter anyway, just because it's not a particularly uplifting time of the year, but this is an actual, like, chemical problem in the brain. Uh, you have artificial plants around your desk. It's more summer-like. Like $100. Yeah, the price has come down, Ben, because of LED technology, but like 10, 15 years ago, they were really expensive. Because the thing is, you can't just put any old bulb in it. It has to be full-spectrum light. It has to have the whole spectrum in it. Zorg, it probably was just you. If you didn't actually have that problem, then it wouldn't fix it. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> like, it's not a cure-all. It's not going to stop you being depressed. It's just going to counter the SAD. But if you're still if you're still wrapped up in negative thoughts and things like this, you're not... It's not a bulb is not going to fix that. Because if it did, it would be a lot, lot easier to treat depression. You just go, oh, we'll get one of these bulbs and you'll be fine. You know, it's just not like that. Things are way more complex. Beatnik, thank you for half a year. Good evening, Squirrel Nutters. Hope you're well. Not bad, Beatnik. Is it a proper one, Funky Spangler? Like, not just an alarm clock that wakes you up, but an actual uh, full-spectrum light for SAD suffering? Because there are two different things here. There's one... It's just the alarm that wakes you up with daylight, and there's one that is actual proper daylight bulb. <laughs> you just take your meds and get on with it. Well, some people do photonic, you know. Lots of people do. They just sit in the sun and, and like. It's the people who can lie on the beach for hours on end. I, I just, I don't get how they can do that. Like, not only is it too hot, but you get burned. But some people can do it for, like, the entire day. They can just sit out there in the sun, like a piece of meat just getting grilled. It's unreal. Moscow has the same latitude as Edinburgh. In deepest winter, we have six hours of daylight. <laughs> In summer, though, you have six hours of darkness. after an hour sunbathing. The trick is, shoot bandits, is to like either read a book or listen to a book. But the problem is, is I can't sit out there for too long because I'll just start, I get a sweat rash. Like if I sunbathe after a couple of days, I start coming up in a rash. And I think it's a reaction to the sun lotion and stuff like that. exploring area person yeah I know what you mean shoot bandits like that's that's when I tend to get tanned better as well as if I'm doing something I don't like just lying there like on, on a sunbed and I can be you know, I can be playing a game I could be playing I don't know volleyball or water polo or something get tanned that way but I'm doing something
Did I have a Sunday dinner? Nope. I had beans, cheesy beer nose on toast. The hottest temperature in the UK? I don't know, Fluke. I don't think it's ever gone past mid-30s temperature-wise, where I am. I think the hottest ever is something like 37, maybe. If you're ginger, then you don't have the skin at all for sunbathing. Peter Belt, seven months. Did uh, did you watch the I racing 24 hour? Uh, Jimmy Broberts seen wrecked out about seven to eight hours in. Mm. I didn't really watch it to be honest. Peter Belt. That's the thing about it, though. Peter Belt, it's a 24 hour race. It just takes just one lapse in concentration from somebody and boom, it's all over. Yeah, but being taught Georgia is is a state in America. The UK is an, is, is an island surrounded by water, so extreme temperatures aren't that often. Like continental weather's different. The Gerbster, thank you for the 100 bits. Yes, Australia is indeed an island, but what's the difference between the UK and Australia in terms of being an island? Australia is an entire continent. <laughs> it's huge. So, in the UK, like, the wind can, can blow from one side to the other in a matter of hours. In the Australia, it's a matter of days. That creates a very, very different climate. don't really understand humidity. It's the amount of water vapour in the atmosphere. You stood up all night watching it? Wow. <laughs> Next special event is 12 hours of Bathurst in February. See, 12 hours sounds, to me, 12 hours sounds better. Peter Bill. It just, like, you, your shift as a racer is going to be shorter. Um, you can stay away for 12 hours and watch the whole thing, you know. It, it just seems to work better. People prefer high humidity or high dry heat. Dry heat's better, shoot bandit. Humidity is not enjoyable. It's, it's very uncomfortable because your body can't sweat. So you can't cool down. I missed your previous bits, Peter Bill. 
I did indeed. I spotted for someone during the I race in 24 hours in Daytona. After a few mishaps, we finished 11th out of 55. That's pretty good, to be fair. Just finishing is good, though. That's the thing. Yeah, one spot for top 10. Just a number though. You should still be proud of that. That's still very good going. <laughs> you just realise your dogs have been outside for half an hour, Citrus. Oops, indeed. <laughs> That is a very, very valid use of the oops email. Dry heat is more dangerous. Well, if you're dumb enough not to drink, yeah. Time to go and get the first night shift of the week over. All right. See you later, Waity. Have a good one. Flickering textures in ETS2. That sounds like a graphics card problem. <laughs> Reading chat hype. Too dry heat makes your mouth sore and dry. Yeah, you have to keep your fluids going with dry heat. But it's still more comfortable than high humidity. Well, your clothes are soaking wet and sweat's just pouring off you all the time. You still have to drink, but you're really, really uncomfortable. I think we're dropping frames. I've not dropped a single frame. Did I get your resub trumped? Uh... I missed out Beatnik, I think, half a year. Good evening, Squirrel and Nutters. Hope you're well. Nope, I've not. I can't see it at all, trumped. Scroll back, I can't see it. Yeah, Japan does have quite a lot of humidity. That entire area around Asia, you know, Taiwan and stuff, Thailand, they're just really high humidity. Not my kind of weather at all. Your package has still not arrived. Uh, I've not seen one. You're welder in Australia and it's 30 plus Celsius and some are very hot. I can't imagine, like, you know what I can't imagine doing, Carter, is, I mean, welding, you're going to find yourself doing it in some hot places, I imagine, but imagine being like a chef and they're working in those hot kitchens, flames everywhere and it's boiling hot and you're trying to work like, oh. Don't you, don't you, don't you did. You did. And I got fined for it. I'm indicating, I'm leaving the roundabout. He hits me and I get fined for it. It makes sense, obviously. I'll tell you what I don't like is the, um, you know, the people who fit central heating. And they have to go and, and like a lot of people get central heating done in summer because that's when you have discounts. But for the central heating fitters, 
they have to go up into people's attics and like often crawl into small horrible itchy places when it's super hot and then get the blowtorch out and start fitting pipes and boilers it's like oh my god what a job like they deserve their money at that point Worked in the kitchen as a chef, which can go to over 50 degrees. Low humidity makes it okay though, just drink more water and you'll be fine. 50... I know what you mean, EV, but I just can't... I just couldn't deal with that. I, I would rather it be cold. <laughs> yeah, I could do cobalt. It's not... I'm not really bothered about the money though, cobalt. It's not like I can't afford to find. It's just the fact that they've not sorted this out. So I don't get it. Why is the stream called Even Physics? Because I'm using a physics mod on the truck. Yeah, 42 is a bit too hot for me, Jordan, but it depends on the humidity as well. You work in a normal office and still complain it's too hot. I've worked in many places wearing a suit with no air conditioning in the office and it, I, I'm sweating as like I'm sticking to my seat, you know, as I'm doing my job. I'm trying to think about code and I'm sticking to my seat. It took my previous employer like two years to get aircon put in. And despite the fact that people just keep taking breaks because they're too hot, like the productivity levels drop, just get the aircon in and people will be happier and will work better. It's, it's just a no-brainer. Oh yeah, but it's only hot like a couple of months of the year. Yeah? And that's two months when you're losing huge amounts of productivity. It's not good, solid. Why do you have to dress in a suit as a software engineer? Because I was a, what they call a lead consultant, which is basically a person that um, designs a system, meets the clients, um, specs it all out, and then gets other developers to do code, as well as you basically doing usually the trickier work. That's what a lead consultant does. You have to be technically technically one of the best, as well as being great at consultancy so uh there, are, there aren't many people around like that funnily enough which is why it was a bit of a, a kick between the legs when i said to them i'm leaving <laughs> and then the four, and then seven days later my mate said the same thing and he was a lead consultant as well so we're like what Yeah, but code monkeys, you know? I mean, there's coding and there's coding. <laughs> you work outside the airport ramp, so in the uh, hottest summer, and rubbish the rest of the year. Yeah, I can, well, I don't know. I mean, I would have thought spring and autumn's not too bad. treated you better yeah but they're just idiots and some employers are you know they're very short-sighted they just think about the money side of things I'm, <laughs> I'm not the ultimate consultant I'm just experienced
Boy, it's misty. Autumn was real wet. Mm. But temperature-wise, it's better, I guess. Is the game available on a Mac? I think it still is, yeah. Am I nervous about the air exam? Not really, but I know that, you know, like 10 minutes before I'm about to sit it, I'll be like, <laughs> But what can I do, Audi? I've got to do it, you know? Said in a movie trailer voice, Squirrel, the ultimate consultant. Hail to the turkey. Thank you for the resume. Welcome back. I'm sure you'll pass. It's not a it's not a definite thing, but if I if I spend the right amount of time this week studying and making sure I've got the details nailed, then I should pass. But I mean in a twenty question exam you can only get four wrong. You get four wrong and you'll pass. Get five wrong you'll fail. A beer chilling in the fridge for after the test. I've got to drive back though, shoot bandits. <laughs> Hipster. Paul, put that physics mod in ETS2, work fine. Put the two trailer mods that you're using in crashes halfway through the loading. Take them out and remove the mother folder, still crashes. Uh, so that's got to be something else, Andy, because that's not happening for me. It sounds like an interaction between maybe those mods and ones that you've got, possibly. Have a look at the log file, see if you can get any clues. I've no idea, Giddy. You left your tech support job as the management tree. Cared not one whit of the people actually making the company money. Yeah, it's not an uncommon thing, Cobalt. What's an air exam? Air law. I'm studying to be a private pilot and uh, I have nine exams to do. And one of them is air law, which is a bit like the way to think of it is like the highway code of the sky. It's all about the laws of the air, you know? Symbols. Things that, you know, if you're if you're taxiing on the ground and you see another plane, who has right of way? If you're flying along and a plane starts to overtake you, who has right of way? If you find yourself in a situation where a plane's coming straight at you, what do you do? It's all that kind of stuff that you need to know, the very basics. Uh, Flug, I think I do it. Yeah, I do it down at the um, flight center. Put you in a room, give you a question paper, give you 40 minutes, off you go. No, you turn to the right, is what you do. If you find there's a plane coming straight at you, you turn right. And because the other pilot knows the same thing, he turns right as well, and it's all good. That's what happens. You see, that's why you have to know it, because if you don't know it, there's no, there's no like, protocol for collision avoidance, is there? You turn right and he goes left, that's no good. Why do you want to become a private pilot? Is there a reason for it? Yes, I like flying Matroska. Being a pilot was almost a, a career that I went down, but I ended up doing computer science. So I want to get my license and go flying again. For fun, enjoyment, 
maybe make some videos. Have some nice days out. No, it's not. No, lava tube, there is no exception, dude. You turn right. You're just kidding. Yeah, you, you turn right. There's no exception in the air. No, TCAS is a collision avoidance system, Justin, that is only on the more expensive aircraft. Yeah, and it only works on on it only works with aircraft with transponders that are transmitting the altitude and um, the altitude and speed and direction. In other words, mode S transmitters, I think they are. The mode S transmits the flight ID as well. Whereas a mode C will only transmit the altitude and speed, something like that. So, in other words, a TCAS won't stop you from hitting a little Cessna 172. Let me put it that way. What happens is a plane is at the right as well as ahead. What does that mean? But I don't understand the question, Citrus. Yeah, but transponders, transponders have different modes, that's the thing, and different capabilities. They don't all transmit the same information. Like, a mode alpha transponder will not transmit the altitude. It means you can't turn right as another plane and you're right. Uh, no, but he said it was ahead of you. I don't, I don't understand the question. If, if when you turn right, there's another plane. Well, what, coming at you or just there or what? Like, so there's, there's two planes in the sky, one coming at you and one on your right. You still got to turn right, but you're going to have to pull up or, or go down as well. You should have spotted the plane on your right, to be honest. You should always be looking around. What if you're surrounded by planes coming at you in all directions? I'd just stay where you are because they're all going to avoid you, aren't they? Just finish your gift deliveries, now waiting for the drawing tomorrow. What drawing? That's why you prefer the airlines, a TCAS does it for you. Oh, the drone of the winners got you. Yeah, yeah. What for the uh, euros in the shop kind of thing? Cypher, it depends what class of airspace you're in. TCAS has superior control surface inputs over the pilot in case of collision avoidance. Uh, on which aircraft, Bez? Uh, 
yes, Ralpho, I am using a steering wheel and reading your message, so I completely missed that. damage that caused my trailer. One percent. An aircraft TCAS is a real TCAS in a period of decision because of what happened mid-air over Germany years ago. Uh, I don't know, Baz. I'd have to look that up. I'm not convinced by that. Normally, it's always the pilot in command has the last say. Normally. Except in the case of an Airbus in a stall, but I know that. I don't know about the TCAS side of things, Ben. Triple C, have a good night. See you next week. Can't make a rational decision. Um, it can make rational decisions. It can't make complex decisions. That's the problem. Like ultimately, a computer makes decisions based on the code. Yeah, which, which was all programmed algorithms. That's all a computer is: algorithms. But you can't code for every scenario. You can't code for every situ situation. Mostly, you code for mathematics. Mostly it's algorithms, like saying, well, this plane's at this altitude, this speed, this direction. If we do this, or if we don't do this, we're going to hit blah, 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 predictions. It's going to work that out. It's an entirely rational thing to do. But, you know, was it tested when the plane only has one engine running? So, the plane suffers engine failure, then gets it in itself in a situation where there's a TCAS problem. Did somebody code for that? Did somebody test it? This is where you have the problems, whereas an actual pilot can make adapted decisions, yeah? They can adapt the situation to the current environment and then make a better decision. Uh, I use a G27 shifter with an SKRS on top. AI? What do you mean AI? You can't just throw the word AI in there like it means something. What does that mean? How do you train the AI? I don't believe I've been to this drop off like this before. Yes, I know what AI stands for. Machine learning. Well, I just said, what did you train it? How did you train it? A machine can only learn when you give it thousands and thousands of thousands of different situations. Do you know that the the uh, the neural net that's in the uh, Kinect, the Xbox Kinect, is baked into it? Nobody knows how it works. They basically gave it a whole load of situations. People moving around and all kinds of stuff. And then when it basically started reacting correctly, they just baked it and that's it. And they just reproduced that net. But Nobody really knows how it's doing its thing, it just works. <laughs> it's the same thing with the um, Amazon Logistics Network. It's constantly learning and teaching itself based on what happens to people's parcels. But nobody really knows how it's working now, it's just doing its thing. But machine learning involves countless amounts of situations for it to properly be good.
<laughs> Johnny Cap. Johnny Cap's cool. No, no, nobody's putting AI into safety critical situations right now. People still prefer a human pilot. A trained human pilot with 20 years of experience. Makes people f feel safe in a plane. Man, this trailer behaves weird. It's the same with um, with chess. Like chess now, there's they've already made a chess uh, neural net that just cannot be beaten by a human opponent. It just cannot be beaten. They they've pitted it up against grandmasters. They've pitted it up against the best AI systems, and it just it's never lost a match. The worst it's done is a draw. And again, in fact, when they built it, they didn't even teach it opening moves. Like, Deep Blue was taught opening moves and stuff. This one wasn't. They just they just had it play. You know, remember that scene in um, War Games where Whopper is, is, is running through all the different scenarios of of uh, global thermonuclear war and it's going right Russia strikes first America strikes first boom, 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 boom. and it just runs all the combinations and then it comes up with a conclusion that um, nobody wins basically it's like that they just let it rip they just said here's chess here's the rules off you go and it just started to play it just went oh if I do this do that oh okay that was bad and it literally taught itself all the opening moves <laughs> What is it about this trailer when you reverse it? It's behaving really weird. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, but 20 years ago, chess was a very difficult problem to get a computer to play well, and grandmasters could still beat it. Now, not a chance. Um, Lex4, thank you very much for subbing. Thanks for the nutty welcome. Thank you, Lebs. Welcome to NetHouse. And uh, Baz, because of what happened over Germany, were TCAS told to climb an ATC, told to descend, and pilot descended, and the planes collided. Now, hang on a minute, Baz. When the ATC tells you to do something, the pilot can overrule it. The ATC does not have last word. The pilot in command has... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The ATC are advising him, basically, is what's happening. The pilot in command is ultimately responsible for the safety of the aircraft and everybody on board. They can ignore ATC in the interest of safety. So if that pilot decided to go with what the ATC told him and what the TCAS told him, that was a pilot error. He made a judgment call and he made the wrong one. It's since stated in the rules, in any case, always do what the TCAS says. Again, there's a difference between it saying that and the TCAS system having surface control authority over the pilot that's what you said originally and that's what i don't know michael gremlin hello paul bye <laughs> hi bye michael gremlin <laughs> you're welcome presley uh it is 225 pro months is what it is a military boat I think I've seen that before. I doubt a plane, uh, I doubt a full AI plane with no human pilot would ever be trusted. No, you can't talk, you cannot talk in infinitives like that being thought. You're basically saying that it will never be trusted. Uh, you're not saying, you're not taking into account that 
in the next hundred years, AI is just, AI research is just going to explode. And they will be, machines will be probably more capable than humans. Eventually. But of course it will reach a point where AI is as good as the human brain. The human brain is basically AI in a biological, like, setup. Biological, so that we can grow and build and adapt to a planet's surface. But if you bake that into a machine, it can still fly a plane. It's just one specific problem. A humans, humans can fly planes, drive trucks, pilot shuttles, do brain surgery, build machines. I mean, AI can't do that. We're in impressively adaptable. But building a machine to do one problem, that's a different thing. Am I running a special tanker trailer pack? I'm running the Jazzy Cat mod. Take the Panther. What, this? Why do you want to take that? Machines will only stream us on Twitch in 50 years. <laughs> I doubt that. I don't know, Shoot Bandits. I kind of feel like technology, in the, as we go on now, technology will become indispensable part of us. You know, at the moment, most technology is external, as in your phone. But already you're starting to see technology being integrated into people. You know, people that can't see having a bionic eye, for example. It'll start like that. It'll start with um, fixing problems and then also enhancing. So, you know, your, your eye can only see a tiny, tiny amount of the spectrum of light. Tiny amount. If you want to see more, you can get headsets for it. But what if you could have, like, different eyes? not biological eyes what if you can have different ones that could see far more enhanced eyes enhanced hearing enhanced running and then eventually it'll become a fashion item you know press the button change the color of your skin <laughs> you know change the change the color of your eyes wake up in the morning and go i fancy green eyes this morning Beep. augmentation yeah and then ultimately it will kind of blend into being a person without technology upgrades will be seen as weird <laughs> that ultimately that's where it'll go and as we've said before like it's been written in many 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 books if you want to if humans want to colonize space we are going to have to integrate with technology because a human is not built for space we're just not uh i don't know if we'll all be robots no we're not going to be robots daigle I don't know, the technical term is, I don't know, a bionic person or an android or something. I don't know. A combination of technology and bio... Basically physical and biological. Do you remember Battlestar Galactica? They had the Cylons, yeah? Do you remember the Cylons? And, and when the, the new series of Battlestar Galactica, and when they took apart... They, they found out that they're basically like a biological brain integrated into the craft. So it's like, it's like a machine, like a flying machine that is biological inside. So it can make proper AI decisions. That's, that's kind of more likely scenario. Can't even cure the common cold. How are they going to fix baldness and deafness? Well, baldness is uh, baldness is a genetic thing, which will be fixed. Common colds, there's no such thing because the virus is so adaptive, it mutates every time. If it was just one thing, you could treat it, but it's not. Every time it comes back different. That's what makes it hard. Deafness, well, I'm sure they'll fix deafness. <laughs> 